1 Corinthians, Paul says, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In this podcast, we explore those who went the wrong way. We examine why it happened, how it happened, and who it happened to. But most importantly, we always ask the question, could it happen to us? Well, how you doing today, folks? Got some exciting news for you. We are not live. We are in video on the YouTubes. Today, we mark our very first foray into the world of video. Video killed the radio yeah. star, ladies and gentlemen. Brian, how are we doing today? Oh, it has been a good day. I've gotten a lot done, stayed busy, and that's that's always a plus for me. If I sit around and just am bored for the day, then... I, I get into stuff that I don't need to be getting into, like rebuilding servers, which is what I've got in my office right now is four servers sitting here. <laughs> oh, no. See, I don't exist on those planes. I don't get bored. I'm either super duper busy and very excited at what I'm doing, or it's life crippling depression, and I don't want to do nothing. Uh, it's okay. up or down. <laughs> Black and white, there are no grays in my world. Oh, this will not surprise some of our listeners. So listen, we're doing this new thing here where we're all going to be on YouTube. We've brought our, our, our podcast out from the podcasting world to reach a newer, wider audience. Why, why are we doing this? Why do we care about a wider audience here? We, we are here to help people, right? That's something you and I have talked about time and time again, right? As we're talking about these different groups, you know, Every time it comes back to, could it happen to us, right? Yep. Could it happen to you, right? And so we're here to hopefully help navigate these waters. That's a true thing. Every time we, we go, to, we do all this research in these groups, and then we do the podcasts on them, and we start talking about them. And it, that comes up all the time is, wow, this could ha- this, this happened to regular people. People mm-hmm. a lot of times think it's just crazy kooks that fall for these cults. So, yes, we believe that the wider outreach we have, the more we can reach out to people because some of these cults we talk about are long gone. But some of these cults are not long gone. We were just discussing how some of these cults are are still have followers. And, you know, we're both followers of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And because we are followers of Jesus Christ, we believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And the way to the Father is through Jesus and we want to tell other people about that. One of the things about our podcast is we've been very uh, apparent that we are viewing this stuff from a Christian perspective. Now, we are yeah. not all the Christian perspective. We're just two guys. We don't have the same perspective from each other, let alone right. every other Christian's <laughs> perspective. Yeah. Okay? And neither one of us are going to tell you that we're, you know, know everything perfect about the Bible and all this. But... We do want to share the Christian perspective on things and the best way that we do have knowledge and understanding and share that. And I think Mm -hmm. that's something that's lacking a lot of other cult podcasts is is that perspective. Yeah. So that's where we see we can add on to uh, the content that's already out there. Uh, Some of this is fun. It's fun to hear stories about these things. But the one thing I'm going to keep reminding you of, these are are true stories. We're not talking about made-up abstract groups here. Um. It's kind of like true crime, and so it is true crime stories. And so right. we want to these to be the known as a warning, you know? Mm-hmm. It's important we study history, at least we repeat it, right? Right. Yep. So just as our this is just our introduction video on YouTube. We're not gonna go over a cult today. This will be a fairly short video. We just want to say who we are and what we're here to do. Uh Brian, do you want to start off with a quick biography on yourself and uh tell our, our new audience here um our, a little something, something about you? Yeah, I, I I was telling Matt as we got started, I I don't do talking about myself, so I had to write a bunch of things down. Um, but I and, I am a Christian. What was that? Oh, and I told I told Brian that I was gonna 
listen to what he said and then <laughs> right. copy it. I'm much more the one who's going to do stuff on the fly and just talk about things. Brian yep. is the one who's going to be much more prepared about stuff. Yep, have it all in bullet points and notes. And uh, But I, I grew up in a Christian home, right? Uh, we went to a small Baptist church. I think I was Baptist the vast majority of my life. Um, in 2006, I had some life-changing events happen and surrendered to the ministry, right? That's kind of the thing that high school, college age guys do in the Baptist church. In many cases, they surrendered to ministry at some point. Um, 2008, I became a youth pastor for a small church in Michigan and then moved back home and picked back up to being a youth pastor there and served until 2018. Uh, if I if I remember right, uh, was ordained in 2013. Um, I've always loved learning about the church and her teachings and her history, and so I, I started digging. Right as I was, really right before the pandemic, started digging into the historical church. Right as an evangelical, because I wanted to know more. Right, it wasn't something that we learned. In our church, we learned, you know, kind of the last 50 years of church history, and that was about it. So I started digging, and, and that's when I found Eastern Orthodoxy. And that's that's where we're working at the moment, is, is into Orthodoxy. Um, married my wife in 2008. Uh, today, in 2008, actually. <laughs> and really? yeah. Yeah, uh, today is our anniversary, and she's out of town. Uh, oh, dude, our anniversary was yesterday. Oh, congrats! All right, next uh, year we got to do a better job, both of us, on this. Maybe <laughs> we should go do something big. Right? Yeah, next year it's fifteen years for us. So, um, but we have four children. Uh, we adopted three out of the foster care system. Fostered a whole lot more than that, right? Um, currently, an IT guy. I'm a senior engineer. For a company that focuses on churches and nonprofits. So I spend almost every day of the week at a church, serving a church, working in a church, helping a church do ministry, right? So even though I myself am not doing ministry, I'm still enabling ministry, which I, I really enjoy. And I'm I'm I want to be a writer, speaker leader right in the in the world so i went back to school went to liberty university right before covid in the before times before uh, the before times yep um so there i completed two bachelor's degrees a degree in apologetics which is the the responding to questions about christianity it's really what apologetics is supposed to be uh biblical studies right so digging into actually what the bible says and I minored in global studies, so learning about the culture and the world around us. Um, I then decided that I didn't have enough of school and went back for a graduate certificate in Greek, um, which, as I've thought about it, I, I've, I, I think I really did that so that I didn't have to learn Greek if and when I decided to do my master's. I, I don't want to have to learn Greek and write a thesis at the same time. That did not sound like fun. And I right now, I write for the blog for Faith, Frauds, and Falsehoods. So everything that you read there comes from me. Um, I've got my own blog, Downtime Theology. And I'm a co-host with my friend Ted on the podcast, Let's Talk Church. Let's Talk Church. So Matt, that's about me. What about you? Well, that was a very <laughs> good about you. I'm glad you wrote that down. Me too, because uh, I never would have said all of that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of things. That makes me think I wouldn't have reached as far back as you did, so I'm, I am going to reach that far back. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, I growing up, we didn't go to church a whole lot. Um, we had a kind of whole lot of different, some different religious influences and things. Churches fed us; we were poor. Sometimes churches gave us boxes of food and stuff. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we'd go with relatives and stuff. I go with my grandma because uh, the grandma asks you to go to church. You say yes, ma'am, and you go to church. Um, had a real traumatic experience as a kid when I went with my great grandma. 
Apparently I was bad and I was talking or something too much. <laughs> and they locked me in a room with this table with chipping paint. Oh, gosh. And that's stuck in my head my whole life. So I can't kind of a negative uh, aspect of church, but uh, I uh, asked the Lord to be my Savior at 18 years old. Um, that's 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 when I, I was saved. And um, that was in a, uh, a small Baptist church. And then later on, I surrendered to ministry. Um, similar timing as you did. I think it was around 2006, 2007. Mm-hmm. Uh, time period, and not long after that, I became a youth pastor, yep. and I did that for several years. Um, y'all hear me tell some stories about that because I was not terribly great at that. <laughs> uh, I became a youth either. pastor, and all of a sudden, I had all these thirteen-year-old girls, some of which were pregnant, as my oh, as my youth group, and that was that was fun. Um, but I'm 39 now, and I was in my early 20s then, and looking back. I think I would have, uh, I know I would have made some decisions differently, but I absolutely still would have done it. It was absolutely a call from the Lord, and I'm very glad it happened. Um, I uh, also have served in many other roles in the church. I've helped in a, in a church plant for many years, um, served on a lot of uh, you know, elder-like position there, uh, mm-hmm. helped bring in a new pastor and everything. I've done some preaching and stuff over the years. Uh, I got ordained in, I think it was 2018. We actually did the ordination. Um, I uh, worked for a similar company or the same company Brian did, um, does now um, doing IT work for, for big churches in the Dallas area. Had a blast at that. Left uh, the church world for a little bit, um, just work-wise. And now I'm the IT director for um, one of the largest uh, Methodist churches in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a lot of fun. I enjoy IT work. I think the Lord has supernaturally blessed me with the ability to learn things fast and learn and adapt and, and, and grow with that. I also think the Lord has supernaturally given me the ability where people like me. Mm-hmm. I find it weird. I don't think I'm the most likable guy sometimes, but people just naturally like me and I get along we with do. a lot of folks. Yeah. Um, and I think that's helped me a lot in my career and in ministry over the years. Uh, one of the things that we do share is a love for church history and um, a love for trying to figure out some of these things, you know? So uh, I think that's a lot of fun. Part of the reason we part, we did this podcast is because we didn't work together anymore. We we skipped, right? we both skipped the whole thing that we ran a business together. That's true. We, we did. Yeah. We developed from scratch <laughs> and sold an internet business and cashed out and walked away. Yeah, And yet we didn't even mention that part. So um, I met Brian years ago whenever he walked into my my computer repair shop trying to sell me some advertising for the radio station. And the history is a little fuzzy. I still don't remember if I bought anything or not. I think we might have done some trade or something. I was going to say, I don't remember. Um, Let's be honest. Brian wasn't a great uh, radio salesperson. (laughs) They kept him around because he was really good at fixing stuff. Yep. Um. So they found stuff for Brian to do. They they still would probably like to have Brian back. <laughs> but uh, yeah. we later became business partners and uh, worked together. That was mm-hmm. always fun because if y'all see, we have different personalities. Uh, we work well together, but we do not work the same. Right. And uh, clients have always very much appreciated that. The one thing we are both good at is making a client feel like they are uh, important and not stupid. You know, that's really easy to do in IT work to talk down to people. Both of us are good at talking in plain English to somebody. And that's what we hope to do here with the podcast is talk in plain English about stuff. We're going to I'm uh, I'm going to try. You know, this yeah. this is the area in which it gets hard for me, right, to talk in plain English when we're talking theology. Somewhat. It's, it's very you got to Brian be is also a country precise. boy from East Texas. Um even if he <laughs> speaks like a scholar from Oxford. I don't know about right? Oxford. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> um, let me see. I think I covered most all the stuff you did. Yeah. I think I hit all the same points there. We're already getting kind of long on this video. So in this video, I didn't even mention the name, the faith frauds and falsehoods in the beginning of this, but you heard in our in intro. intro that played. <laughs> um, we're going to cover faith frauds and falsehoods. Some things we're going to cover are cults. Cults is our main thing. 
but we're also going to cover some other falsehoods that may or may not be a cult. We'll discuss some of that stuff. And uh, we'll discuss um, other faiths that, you know, maybe it's not a fraud. Maybe it's just another faith. Obviously, as Christians, we think Christianity is the the, the correct faith. And uh, we're going to present reasons for that. But we're going to cover, cover other faiths as well. Um, a lot of the stories we cover are interesting. And a lot of the stories we put a lot of work into researching. We mm-hmm. generally try to take a few weeks and research something. And then we record an episode about it. And we do most of our recordings at one time and split it up into several episodes. In yep. the podcast world, that format works pretty well for us. So we're kind of replicate that into the YouTube mm-hmm. world and see how that goes. Yeah. I uh, think so. One, some of the things we're going to see on YouTube we haven't seen the podcast world is commenting. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, I'd ask y'all to be nice, but it's the internet. Nobody's nice on the internet. <laughs> uh, we've yeah. both been on the internet a long time. We understand that. So say, the, the ones who are nice on the internet are the ones who never comment at all. So right. <laughs> uh, but, so we expect some of that. Yeah. So why don't we, uh, real quick? You know, I'm gonna take you down a, a side path here. Why don't we talk real quick about what we're classifying as a cult? Right. Classifying as we've, a cult. Yep. We've got our list of criteria that we're we're checking off for each different group and determining where do they fall right in this list oh we need a lower thirds uh kool-aid graphic yes. yeah so we're going to uh, rate cults based I'll on how many glasses that. of kool-aid although the kool-aid corporation would like me to mention that in the uh uh um people's temple jim jones jim jones people's temple jonestown <laughs> jonestown that it was not kool-aid that they drank it was flavor aid not kool-aid yep go back but and we're going to rate it back second... as a kool-aid anyway <laughs> Yeah, go back and listen to our second podcast episode or third podcast episode. So we're, we're all taking all those Jones. episodes, and they're not going to have video, but we're taking the audio of those and putting them yeah. up on YouTube as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to work towards that. That's a that's a work in progress. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but real quick, yeah. So since we are going to have the access of of commenters at this point, um, I think it's probably good to to throw out what we're using as our criteria because. We are not the smartest people in the world, right? We don't know everything. As much as both of us might say that we are the smartest people, uh, we both will readily admit that we don't know everything. If you force me to admit that, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, this is where the comments could be very helpful. I would love yep. to see some others' opinion on this. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also discussed bringing some other people on to the show Yep. Um, to get their opinion on things. I, I'm... I'm a, big fan of doing some stuff like that i've actually had brought this up to you yet i've actually had some some of our listeners who've reached out to me and asked about this mm. nice yeah okay. so we should discuss some of that a little bit later yeah so 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 our criteria what's on, our first criteria um i i would hate to say first right it's the first in my list that doesn't mean it's the priority criteria right well, that's important to start there, with, right? Yeah. There's no one thing that defines this is a exactly. cult. And this is right. why we have a couple of criteria. We've actually refined this a little we have bit. 12. Yep. And we're open to refining it a little more. Mm-hmm. Because it's a little it's a little weird. Like, what is a cult? What isn't a cult? Often right. in culture, a cult, a, a group is called a cult if it's just not common. Right. right? For instance, Christianity was definitely called a cult, mm-hmm. um, or, or their word for it, uh, when it first started. And it fits a lot of our criteria right yep so most cults right have several of these 12 right some sort of centralized authority right generally within a single person or family unit yeah usually one leader or a husband wife team or a father son grandson right they their authority is very very centralized um, a we versus they mentality. Um, some sort of intense proselytism. Well, uh, let's slow down just a little bit. We versus okay. they mentality. We- that is where we say we're right, they're wrong. We're this, they're that. Right. We against they, we against the world. You know, right. um, yep. we're the chosen ones. We're going to heaven. We're going to lead uh, in, in New Zion. We're mm-hmm. the ones going to enter the spaceship. They are not. If you right. want to be a part of this, you join us. Some of the groups we cover, you join, some you don't join. 
Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay, um, and then, so we were saying, what was your next one? Uh, intense proselytism. Which is not as common uh, among some of the older cults that we've talked about. Um, you know, we talked about the CSA, right? The Covenant, the Sword, and the Arm of the Lord. They did some proselytism, right? They wrote some things and put it out there, but not to the extent that Jim Jones or Tony Alamo did. Right. right. And Heaven's Those Gate didn't were... do a whole lot of proselytism. Right. And so that's, that's again, like we said, these are all kind of variable things. This is one yep. of the things, but it's not all by itself. I know some Christian groups that are super into proselytism and mm-hmm. some who are really not as much. Right. Yep. Um, isolationism is a, is a big one for a lot of cults, if not yeah. all of them. Right? Give up your father and mother. Yep. And follow. Come be with us. Yeah. Yep. Um, exclusivity. Is a is a big one. So we're the only ones who have the truth. We have the truth. You know, you may or may not get to join us, right? That we're this something other, right? This ontologically different thing than the rest of the world. Um, elitism, you know, falls kind of in, into that same category. We're better than you. We're we're better than the world. Um, a misplaced authority. Right as we start getting into more theological things, um, eschatological error. So end times, last days, errors. Uh, we talked about uh, David Koresh recently. Uh, well, that's a, that's a very common good. one about mm-hmm. this is what's going to happen in the end. Where this is, yep. there's going to be an end to this. A lot of cults, there's an end times scenario that plays out right. often soon. Mm-hmm. And it's the direction yep. of that that makes all the difference. Right. Yep. Um, so a big one, modification of vocabulary. Right? So tweaking what words mean in a religious context. Right? So that's a that's a big one for a lot of cults. Uh, mistaught theological concepts. Right? So taking an entire concept and tweaking it just a little bit. That's a really cults, common thing. Uh-huh. Take scripture and twist it. Yep. Cults are often outside the cultural norms, right? Which, you know, you said in the very beginning. And honestly, if they're labeled a cult by the government, by other religions, by the culture at large, they're probably a cult. <laughs> at but some some level or another. Christianity was labeled such in the beginning, too. Right. Um, and fit some of these definitions. Mm-hmm. So that's why we, we look at all these things and then we try to come up with a, a rating. So we're definitely open to some comments about this. Hey, what is this? Yeah. And that We're here to tell you the stories about them. Um, we, 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 we try to cover the, uh, the history of the cult, the sociological things of the cult, you know, what did, what happened. And then we try to cover the theology as best we know. You know, our right. last episodes, um, theology was hard. Because the cult yeah. didn't release a whole lot. We knew some things based on groups they had split off of, and we knew mm-hmm. some things from some recordings, but there wasn't a lot. Right. Versus other cults issued <laughs> lots and lots of theology stuff. Yeah, where it's hard to to read enough of it. Right. And the other thing is, honestly, y'all, some of this coverage is hard because it's hard to read or do. We covered uh, Westboro. There's so mm-hmm. much hate in that. You know, I know we both arrived at a point covering that that it was like, okay, I can I can just only absorb so much of this right. mess. Yep. You know, we don't have to know every single thing to be able to tell about this, and that we can just only absorb so much. Right. Um, yep. Don't get me wrong. In general, we have fun doing this. Oh, absolutely. Some of it is is a bit of a chore. Yep. Um, especially to get it to get it right. You know. Yep. Yeah, and then you know we had talked about a fourth segment. Of how Which is we, new. We don't have in the, it is in the new. original podcast. This is going right. to uh, in the future. Yep. New for the YouTubes. Uh, how do we, as modern, contemporary Christians, hate to use the word modern. There's connotations I was going to gonna say, are you a but, modern, contemporary Christian? No. Okay. Uh, not at all. <laughs> but as, as contemporary <laughs> Christians, yep. Um, 
it's how do you respond, right? How do you respond when someone comes up to you that's a follower of Jim Jones and tries to convince you to join them, right? How do you know what's right and what's wrong? So we're going to take each cult and we're going to say, these are the pieces that we want to talk about, and this is how you respond to these pieces. We can't give you everything because there's just too much. But uh, So that'll be, that'll be a fun one. I'm looking forward to that. I can put my apologetics degree to use. Okay. Well, listen, Brian, is there anything else we need to tell the people? This is our introductory video. Anything else we need to tell the people before we go today? Um, I'm, I'm excited, Matt. I think uh, come the 1st of February, which should be when our, our first new actual cult episode comes out, uh, we, we're going to be rocking and rolling. Okay. So rocking and we rolling. Talk we're going to be getting it done. Who are we talking about next? Do we remember? look at my list uh let's uh, not discuss that because i think we may change some of that oh okay all right because we did discuss uh well i'll say because it's in the last podcast we discussed covering the church of wells right but actually we want to discuss if that's where we want to go next okay um, honestly y'all because of lack of information there's only so much information out there right and and we want to make sure that we can cover something well for y'all mm -hmm. um so yep. brian and i are going to discuss that see we have we keep a list of different groups and maybe we'll choose yeah. something different. I don't know. We'll see, yeah. but well, either way, you know, we'll be back and uh, go from there. Sounds good. We'll see you soon.